Hello and welcome back to your second Django tutorial. In the first one we uh, installed and set up the Django, uh, fired up our server and we got this uh, cool welcome page that said it worked, congratulations your first Django powered page. Uh, great, we got the Django installed, we got our server up and running and that's our development server obviously we cannot uh, actually host a website off here. but our development server is up and running and we got our first page. Now in this tutorial we're going to go ahead and take a little tour of the Django. Uh, check out the admin portion, create a database, uh, create a user, and look at some of the files. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's uh, open up our terminal and if you still have your server running go ahead and uh, kill your server by pressing control C and it gives you instructions right here. That's pretty cool about the Django kind of gives you instructions as you're going along. So we're going to go ahead and kill uh, the server and that's control C. So our server is now no longer working so if I come back to my page and I get a refresh it says web page not available or connection refused. Okay so first things first we gotta create a database and to create a database we're going to use um, a command in the terminal here that will go ahead and create a database and migrate um, some data into our database. Um, so to do this we do python manage.py migrate alright that's how you create the database at this point but I don't want you doing it that way I want you to do python manage.py make migrations now in the future after you migrate your database the first time Anytime we make changes to our database or our models, which the models are what controls what gets put into our, our database, we always got to do Python manage.py make migrations first. And mine's going to say did not detect any changes. All right. Now I want to do Python manage.py migrate. And the reason I showed you this way, you see all these. Uh, all this data was migrated into my database. The reason I showed you this way is just to get in the habit of always doing Python manage.py um, make migrations and then the next one is Python manage.py migrate. All right, so this is always a two-step process that we're always going to take. Um, so the, cool, we created a database. We can go ahead and open up your favorite text editor. I use Sublime Text. I'm going to open my project, file down to open, go into LPT, and one more back into projects. Sorry about that. LPT, I'm going to open this one up. Now, you could open the one that's a little bit more downstream, the other LPT. I prefer to open this one. This way, I can see my full project, and I can also see what packages are installed in my. Uh, virtual environment. Now you probably won't be touching bin, include, and lib um, very often, but sometimes it's nice to be able to just take a peek inside these packages. Okay. Um, now a LPT. If we open these up, you see we got LPT. Well, actually, we got LPT, LPT, LPT. Well, we named LPT for Learn Python tutorial. Um, this first one is just the root of our virtual environment. The second one's the root of our actual project. And the third one here is an um, app which controls our whole um, app. So it this controls our whole framework, our whole website. This one here, you got um, URLs and settings in there. That one controls everything. This one controls our virtual environment, or is our virtual environment, and then this one is the root of our project. So I'm going to rename this one so we don't have three LPTs. And I like to rename this one to root. You can rename it to anything you like. I've seen people use source. Um, so whatever you like, I use root. So I'm going to change it to root. So I know this is the root of my project. And then I know this one's my um, app that controls my whole framework. Alright, um, so we go ahead and do that. 
Down here you see db.sqlite3, that's our da database. You can open it up and the, this stuff means nothing to me looking at it, but there's ways to read it if you look online. Um, but this is what we just created and it, it migrated information into here and it contains all our database information. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. I'm not going to mess with it. Um, if we look at settings, this is the settings of our whole project here. Um, so inside this folder, it controls our whole framework, our whole website. So like apps, installed apps. We got an admin app, we got an authentication app, we got content types, we got sessions, messages, static files. Awesome. So we already have some apps built into our framework. Middleware classes, uh, this kind of stuff, what this does is controls the interaction between um, the server and our website and the users. So middleware is kind of the middleman for our website and the server. Um, the root URL conf just says, hey, look in LPT for URLs. All right, so LPT URLs. All right, templates. This is where we're going to put our static files how to access our HTML for the front end of our website. This is what controls that in here. Uh, here's our database information. Um, here we, this is where we set up our database. If we weren't using SQLite 3 or using uh, MySQL or something like that, we would set that here. Uh, this is just password validators, build in packages for that. Um, here's your language codes. You can change this to whatever language you want. Our time zones, we can change that. And a couple other settings. And then our static URL, um, where we're going to store our static stuff. We're not going to do that right now, but we'll see that shortly. Here is our URLs um, file. And this controls how our URLs are set up on our um, website. So if we look at URL patterns, we see URL and we see admin, and this is admin site URLs. This is how we would access our admin. So if I go up here into my um, browser and type in admin, oops, I need to have my server running. So I'm just going to press up to I get to Python manage.py run server. So once our server's up and running, we'll refresh this and now you see we have the admin um, login alright so you see we have our default URL here and then we have admin and that's what we're just looking at here here's admin and that's how we access it alright so we'll get more into URLs later on I'm just explaining to you what the files are and what they look like and then WS GI. This is interacting with the server itself, so we really won't mess with this very much either. All right. Uh, so let's go ahead and access the admin. To do this, we're going to kill our server one more time. So Control C, and we're going to create a super user. So we're going to do Python manage.py create super user. All right. It's all one word. And you're going to get some prompts that say, hey, create a username. I'm going to use PWS18974. This is what we use uh, with my company to for default, default development of uh, the Django apps. So I'll just keep it that way because it's already saved in my uh, browser here. Email address, we can do uh, support at learn pythontutorial.com and this is a real email if you have any questions go ahead and feel free to shoot us an email and then password now your password can be as simple as you want or as hard as you want but this will never this portion will never be live out there so um, unless you have people using your computer you can make it very simple so it says super user created and created successfully. So now we have super users created. Let's go ahead and press up twice and we get python manage.py run server. I'm going to run my server. 
and once that's up and running, now I can access the, the Django administration page. And my username and password are entered in there, so I'm just going to click uh, log in. But for you, put your username and password in, and we'll log in. Here's a pretty cool feature about the Django it already has an administration page. Now, if you're going to be having uh, users use this uh, administration page, it's probably not a good idea. This administration page is uh, designed for you and your employees. Um, if you're going to be using this for other users, you could have security issues. So if you're going to want users to log in and be able to change stuff, you might want to create a separate administration page just for those users. Now, when we create our, our apps, which are little packages in our framework here that we'll, uh, we'll talk about in the next tutorial, but when we create our apps, we're going to be able to see the data that we can input in the back end here show up. All right, and We have control over that via our framework and our coding. So it's a pretty cool feature. So if you say you just want to build a blog, you could have blog show up here and you can write your content in here and that's sweet. So this is the administration section. We can look at um, some stuff. We can look at the user. Here's my user. I got staff status. You can put first name, last name. You can add all types of information in here. Um, we can change the per permission. We can check the last login, the date joined. Stuff like that. It's really cool. Alright. Um, we can also create groups. If I go up here, go back one more. Uh, groups. We add a group and stuff like that. So this is just stuff built into Django. Um, so basically that is just an overview of the default settings in Django. We will go ahead and dig deeper here in the next tutorial and create our first app for our project. And we'll start doing some coding. If you have any questions, leave a comment on YouTube. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next tutorial.